Hello, this is Derek Speakins, American Voice Coach. Here's the thing, Sean. I need you to listen very closely and carefully to me. Okay. Don't interrupt because I'm only going to repeat myself twice. You've got a mouth. It's a fine mouth. It makes the mouth noises. It pooches a little bit. Perhaps some people like that. Perhaps some people don't. I don't judge you based on your mouth, pooch, Sean. Uh, it enunciates it it does things uh with its internal organs or some call it a tongue that yes. uh produce noises equivalent to human speech you're equivalent to human speech sean i value you and the thing is sean your mouth not too wide not too narrow it requires adjustments for this task that you were supposed to undertake if you understand, say, yes, Mr. Speakins. Yes, Mr. Speakins. Now, Sean, the adjustments your mouth must take are minute and process-oriented. Are you prepared to follow my instructions? Yes, Mr. Speakins. Ah, uh, you catch on so quick. Lovely. So, the first thing you need to do is open your mouth as wide as it will go. <laughs> now shut it because I'm still speaking. Now, once you open your mouth as wide as it will go uh, again, after I finish speaking this time, um, what you're going to do is it's kind of going to rotate your jaw. And you'll notice as I'm rotating my jaw, I'm irritating a British man, perhaps from the Midlands, Right. That's how that sounds. It sounds like a UK accent. <laughs> yes, Mr. Speaking. <laughs> Correct. See, that's how you sound all the time. Now, you need to sound really? normal. <laughs> and I'm going to teach you how to sound normal compared to this. <laughs> so what yes. you're going to do... <laughs> Mr. Speakins is talking right now. <laughs> so what you're going to do is stop rotating your jaw. And you're going to take the top lip and the bottom lip of your mouth and put them together. And this is what we call the idle pose. This is where your mouth remains when it isn't speaking. And I know this might be very difficult for you to understand. So let me say it in your native parlance. You need to connect your top and bottom lip in a pose that you sustain while refraining from speaking. Does that make sense? Yes, Mr. Speakins. Just call me Derek. I feel like we've known each other long enough. Okay, thank you, Mr. Derek speaking. Spe Mr. Derek. Derek? Yes, Mr. De Derek. Hi. Sir Derek is a nice ring to it, but I'm not going to make you use my full title. Let's just go with Mr. Speakins. Oh, do you have a knighthood? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I don't know okay. how you'd really qualify or determine that. So, you have your mouth in the idle pose. Um... You don't need to confirm that because I can hear that nothing's happening and you're presumably a very good student. Now, what I'm going to have you say is the following quite American sentence. Would you like to join me in my journey to the Denny's? And okay. the manner in which you speak these words is going to be the following. You give up on all hopes of the other person or on all care of the other person understanding what you're saying. You aren't saying this to communicate information. You're saying this for you. Your voice sounds good. It's amazing. It's incredible. They get to hear it. It's a gift you give to the world. So to this purpose, when you say these words, don't say them as if you would like someone to join you on the journey to the Denny's. Say this as if you would like to join yourself on the journey to the Denny's. You sexy man, you. Okay. So relax your lips from their previous strained proportions. And from the idle position, say the words in the relaxed, 
somewhat self-aggrandizing manner described. What? 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 Would you like to join me on the journey to De Denny's? That is what? a substantial improvement. Would you like to join me on the journey? Journey there. Would Remember, you like to join me on the journey? Journey to je journey to Jenny. 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 Here's, here's the thing: when you mispronounce a word, you don't yeah. go back and correct yourself. That's because an hour, really all you've told them is, "Hey, Poe body's perfect. I'm a normal person just like you." Nobody's perfect. Say that nobody's perfect and I'm a normal person just like you. What you're establishing is that you're not a normal person just like them. And they should, in fact, feel somewhat ashamed of themselves for taking up your time. Much wow. like you feel with taking up my time. Yeah, pretty much. I didn't that hear, yes, sense. Mr. Speakins. Yes, Mr. Speakins good so this next time what you're going to say is would you like to go to denny's with me and when you say it make it an invitation to yourself wrapped with a bow perhaps scented with a nice cologne not too nice you don't want to give yourself the wrong message but just nice enough to communicate your affirmation of friendship okay would you like to go to Denny's with me? All right. All right. Now, this is where the custom part comes in. And I okay. direct you in a way to direct, to, to modify your voice um, on an individual basis to approximate normal human speech. <laughs> so what you're going to do... <laughs> is from here... You're going to make the traditional American uh, pucker. Uh, some people call it the uh, the blowout. Some people call it the uh, blow hole. There's a number of breath related terms for this. But essentially what you're going to do is as you're speaking in this very relaxed manner, you're also going to arbitrarily pooch out your mouth and then widen it in certain syllables. So would you like to join me at the Denny's uh, is the result of that. So I'm stretching so. my mouth like stretching it out. Yeah. You know, when you Which... were a child and you wished to disappoint your parents more than you already did and you <laughs> stretched out your mouth as wide as you could go with your fingers and you stuck out your tongue yeah nothing like that okay all you're doing is kind of like in your base uh form occasionally you you make a, a motion as if to smile while speaking while not intending a smile at all so would you like to go to denny's with me becomes would you like to go to Denny's with me? Would you like to go to Denny's with me? Now I'm see I'm hearing a little bit of a drawl here. And this is an underappreciated or little known fact about the American drawl. It doesn't exist. It doesn't Americans exist. Americans don't have drawls. What you think you're hearing when you hear a drawl is in fact um a dialectical motion to indicate emphasis. Right. So much like the Spanish might roll their R's to say crispy cream. The American says, let's go get some fireworks. Let's go get some fireworks. Now, how did you feel when you said that? Uh, slightly awkward. Slightly mm. confused. Like, hmm. I don't know. It's difficult. Like, as someone who is from the other side of the pond, it's difficult to, to fully appreciate. Uh, how... Don't call it the pond. 
the called pond. the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. That's weird because, like, one guy. Well, I was in Florida once, and one person said across the pond, and I'd never heard that saying before. Hmm. He was a I British man in disguise. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So across the Atlantic Ocean, Atl- is it Atlantic? Atlantic? You say instead of Atlantic, Atlantic. Now, here's the thing: whichever way you say it, because you're an American in this scenario, is correct. Oh, so, okay. Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. Let's say you just drop the syllables all together and just say Antic. Any ocean. Yeah. People understand what you mean. If anything, you might coin a new phrase. The Anic Ocean. So, to return to our Denny's example, with Denny's being the second tier of American cuisine and the top being IHOP, we're now going to move on to really complete your training at IHOP. You are in an IHOP, which is a place of desperation and sadness that is occasionally mobbed on a Sunday by a given church group in certain places in the South. And everybody smiles and pretends that they're not panicking as a series of rotund people come through the door with no reservation whatsoever and say they're all going to eat here now, much like the Mongols might have done as they invaded a certain country or city. Uh, And much like some people did before the coming of the Mongols, the servers of IHOP surrender without question. So you are in an IHOP by yourself, which is the way that we both come into this world and die by ourselves. And you look into this server's eyes, calling them a server in your mind because you see them as subhuman. And if they anger you in any way, shape, or form, you will call their manager. And you look this server in the eye, someone who is not to be treated with the same respect or dignity that you give a human being. Perhaps the way you might see a inconvenient sandwich. You look this inconvenient sandwich in the face and you say, I would like three stacks of all-American pancakes, occasionally pooching out your mouth and then widening it at random intervals, never apologizing for a mispronunciation. So, good example. I would like three orders of the all-American pancakes, is how a peak American would say this phrase. Okay. 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 I would like, I I would like, a, what is it? An order of all American pancakes. Okay. I would like an order of all American pancakes. I would like an o- order of all American pancakes. That is a substantial improvement. So I would like an order of all American pancakes. Oh God, it's with weird. With that said, my face feels strange doing that. It's wrong. That's the whole point. Nothing we do oh. is right. So, <laughs> the server looks you in the eyes, regretfully dropping their gaze, signaling submission like an animal in the wild, and says, I'm sorry, we can only give you two orders of all American pancakes at a time. How do you respond? I respond with the good old American catchphrase, no tip. Good, but it's deployed too early. Oh, Staying, shit. Is it like a tactical deployment? It is a tactical deployment. So if you imagine... Ah, okay, so I shouldn't Your do that, lexicon right? of uh, anti-workplace phrases as... Anti-socialist. Skills slotted into a, uh, into a skill bar. Okay. You have no tip being... The goodbye of a certain of a sentence. If you, ah, if, you've, okay. if you're utterly done with the person, it. you say no tip, and at that point you've discontinued all discussion, not only with them but with the rest of the establishment. The thing is, sense. you want three orders of all American pancakes, don't you? I do. Don't you? I do. 
Do you want all American pancakes? I want all American pancakes. The oh, server again replies, I can't give you three orders of all American pancakes. At which point Listen, damn it, I want well two three three loads of all American pancakes. Fantastic, but you have not yet deployed the most potent phrase in your arsenal. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't I would know these like things. To speak to your oh. manager. Oh, okay. So, ninety-nine percent of what you say as an American is not okay. really what you say or how you say it. I just noticed that I don't actually move my mouth all that much. I am too lazy to do it. So, if something just comes out wrong, that's how it comes out. I hope you understood it. But when you are moving your lips rapidly to approximate the American accent, it can be very difficult to realize that the primary indicator of the American accent is attitude. Okay. You come from a country that is truly great and despite many atrocities and injustices in the past has Sorry about that. legitimate has a legitimate path towards becoming better one that in hindsight seems predetermined but actually required much struggle in mm -hmm. the present and past and when you speak but would you speak this you don't acknowledge the nuances of history or the uh, strange mixed legacy of American imperialism within its borders and outside its borders. Mm -hmm. You only know this. You are an American. And that word means something. You don't know what it means, but it's something very good. And you're a good person because you're an American. Oh, and you're a, oh, one minute, you're a, good, your, microphone, your microphone went a bit weird. Could you re-say re that again? And you're a good person because you're an American. And this good American person deserves a damn stack of three all-American pancakes, which in an IHOP would actually be like 12 pancakes on one plate. That's amazing. That would be good. Um, they, the, the pancakes would also be about as thick as your, like in terms of uh, height, about as thick as Not your damn. thumb. Wow. Um, they're very fluffy. They will kill you early. With that said, as a American, you aren't just a person yes. who wants pancakes. You're an American who wants pancakes. You're an American who wants okay. all American pancakes. Yes. You don't want Spanish pancakes no. or British pancakes or Australian no. pancakes. No, I don't. You want American pancakes. I want American so pancakes. Speak. As an American, with a reasonable request to, to go directly against company policy and kill yourself with pancakes, <laughs> you speak with the weight of righteousness from Martin Luther King to the earliest do-gooders in society, perhaps the cavemen who beat out the brains of a saber-toothed tiger because it mouthed off at its owner. You speak with the weight of history and righteousness on your side. So you tell that person that you would like an order of all American pancakes. And if I can't get it, I would like to speak to your manager. I would like three stacks of all American pancakes. And if I cannot get it, I want to speak to your manager. You can't get it, sir. Then I will speak to your manager good use of the word will it is, doesn't provide any question as to what will happen next it simply provides a, an answer you're going to speak to their manager the manager comes Damn up right. wearing a tie and a business suit um a business suit being a long sleeve shirt because that's what counts as business and formal in america along with perhaps a pair of uh business casual jeans she says to you hello sir what can i do for you your waiter here will not get me three stacks of all american pancakes we have a company policy against killing our pers our customers sir we did not win a world war 
for me not to get pancakes. Did you fight in the war by any chance? You no, did, but my grandfather did. all did. Americans did. did. Oh, okay. I, I, I did. I did. I fought in this war. World War II? Uh, no hesitation. Yeah. No hesitation. You yeah. tell her off. You fought in any war mentioned as an American, as a member of the American tribe, uh, regardless of whether or not you actually fought in it. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, did you fight like spiritually. in this war? Spirit, yes. Spiritually, I did. Yes. No, you don't clarify. That's the whole point. Oh, oh. Don't offer the clarification. The clarification okay. is from inside. Constantly, you're telling yourself, oh my gosh, I've become the monster I thought I would become. I've become my father. But you don't say that out loud because saying things is for weaklings. So I say, yes. Yes, I did, damn it. I am so sorry. Have we given you the veteran discount? No, you have not. Now, do not accept the veteran discount because that would be a tier of bastardry unknown to even the greatest Chad. Chad is a phrase used for just you, people. You people know what? are vaguely distasteful. You, you, you know what? I'm going to take the veteran discount. Okay. I'm going to learn from Koala Jackson and I'm going to take the veteran discount. She says, may I confirm your name, sir? My name is Remember, John... No, not, not a drawl, not a drawl. It's a pooch, it's a pooch, and then my, it's a widening, my, a smile that my, never reaches your eyes. My name, my, my name, my, my name is John McClowski. John McClowski, right? John McClowski. Good, because yeah. we have you in our files as a deserter. She pulls out a submachine gun. What do you do? I grab the I grab demand the machine gun. Demand to speak gun. to her manager, damn it. I demand to speak to your manager. Now, in the face of this everlasting call, much like speaking the name of a demon, any person in the service industry must then direct you to their manager, yes. regardless of their skill. Whether an arch demon or a district manager. Yep. In this case, you get the arch demon. From the pits of hell arises the m district manager of IHOP in this particular area. He says to you, John McClowski, you have been found guilty of being a deserter to the American war effort. What? How do you plead? I demand to speak to your manager. So the entire room becomes silent. <laughs> you hear a rumbling in the back of the store. Yes, Mr. Speakins. From the back of the store comes the arch manager. The Derek arch, Speakins, arch manager. manager of IHOP number 8750 in the Tennessee line. And he says to you, Sean Oxspring, <gasps> game manager, man, beast. Man, beast. You wanted to see me? I would, I would like three stacks of all American pancakes, please. If you order them. You do know that you must eat them. And I will. I will eat all the pancakes. And that is true. Because an American I must mention that my face hurts right now from all this face moving. That means that you're doing it right. The pain on the outside reflects the pain on the inside. Ah, I see. That makes sense. From the back of the IHOP comes a plate filled past the brim somewhat of the way to the ceiling with extremely large thick pancakes that are red white and blue in color 
that reminds you of a certain traitorous symbol from across the pond. You despise them for that reason and love them for the fact that it symbolizes something even closer to your heart. As the pancakes America. are laid before you, you're given the traditional eating device of IHOP, a beating heart with which to slather them with syrup. Wow. The syrup of your enemies. Because all Americans have enemies. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple. I've got uh, Jane Everforth. She's a landlord. Uh, my landlord, in fact. I hope she isn't listening to this. Wow. Um, there's uh, Mr. Bob Corton. He was my third grade history teacher. Um, I once said that aliens could have won the Civil War. Probably. Uh, and he told me no. And I said, well, you're a butt face. Uh, well, I mean, that was rude. And he then submitted to me to a number of tortures greater than I can ever recount. Uh, the primary one among them being a one-page essay concerning the existence of aliens in which I was forced to deny their existence regardless of the veracity of this fact. I mean, statistically speaking, there must be aliens out there somewhere. You hear that, Bob Corton? Just... You fucking hear that, Bob fucking Corton? You shit! All right. So, please eat the pancakes. Start with the top one. Get Stand okay. up on the desk if need be. The metaphorical desk of the imaginary Denny's. No, I... I they're the I stand same upon, thing. I stand upon the desk and I eat the pancakes. You eat the first pancake at the top of the stack... And yep. you feel fine. You feel powerful. Eat the next pancake. Yep. Eat the next pancake. Yep. You can't eat the next pancake because you've died of a heart attack. No, 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 no. Congratulations, Sean. Welcome to America. 